It just kind of seems lately that many people on the left are unintentionally trying really, really hard to have a red wave in November. They're pushing some things that the majority of the populace is not going to agree with. They're pushing things that are pretty fringy, but it's making it on mainstream media, these messages, and it's just concerning. The latest being this notion that we should defund the police. Now, I understand that defunding the police, that statement can mean that you just want fewer funds to go to the police. And there, you know, there are people pushing that notion, but there are also people pushing the notion that we should completely defund the police. There are people that are saying we should dismantle the police, that we should abolish the police. And some of you may go, oh, well, well, they really mean, no, no, some people literally mean abolish the police, dismantle the police. Even people like Ilhan Omar are saying this stuff. I will never call sign on funding a police department that continues to brutalize us. And I will never stop saying, not only do we need to disinvest for in police, but we need to completely dismantle the Minneapolis Police Department. <laughs> the Minneapolis Police Department is rotten to the root. And so when we dismantle it, we get rid of that cancer and we allow for something beautiful to rise. And that reimagining allows us to figure out what public safety looks like for us. So take note that they don't really have any sort of concrete plan as to what would replace the police system. They have these really vague ideas, these really grandiose ideas, and a lot of virtue signaling. But they don't have a concrete plan. And they definitely don't have a plan for what will happen during the transition period. You know, they don't seem to care about crime at all, especially violent crime. Oh, that's okay or something. I, I don't exactly know. And if you're saying this whole thing is just fringe, you know, are you going to call this fringe? Majority of Minneapolis City Council announces support for dismantling the police department. Um, nine members of Minneapolis City Council announced their support for disbanding the Minneapolis Police Department at a rally Sunday afternoon in Powderhorn Park. Okay, that doesn't, that doesn't seem very fringe to me. And so this push to demonize all police and to demonize any support of police continues on We've got this lovely article from the Washington Post that says, Shut down all police movies and TV shows now. Like many other industries, entertainment companies have issued statements of support for the protests against racism and police brutality now filling America's streets. But there's something Hollywood can do to put its money where its social media posts are. Immediately halt production on cop shows and movies and rethink the stories it tells about policing in America. So, now we're demonizing television shows and movies that make police out to be the good guys. Now, I understand, you know, movies and TV uh, influence people's opinions about different subjects, but, I mean, can't that also be stretched into talking about video games, violent video games, and violent movies? Should we start banning those things too because, you know, they promote violence? I mean, how far is that going to go? I mean, maybe I'm being unrealistic there. Maybe I'm going too far there in my comparisons. Maybe I'm making unrealistic comparisons. But it really does seem like there's this notion we need to push a particular narrative and anything that doesn't go with that narrative we need to ban. We need to censor. We need to get rid of. We need to remove from the public. And that just... It's, it's kind of weird. And it's... All this stuff added up is starting to make me kind of start to side with the people who 
think that, let's say on YouTube, that we should just allow any sort of mindset to flourish, even misinformation and disinformation. You know, because if, if things are boiling down to you can only say this one narrative and anything that, that veers from that narrative shouldn't be allowed, shouldn't be allowed in the public, yeah, that's kind of concerning, you know? When we're switching from the notion that marginalized voices need to be heard to you can't listen to anything, you're not allowed to hear anything except from these marginalized voices, that's kind of weird. It's, it's kind of concerning. So then there's the way that the narratives around COVID-19 have changed so much. Two weeks ago, if someone wanted to open their small business, almost no matter what it is, or if people wanted, you know, a group of five friends wanted to go to the park or something like that, people were screaming bloody murder. But now that we've got these protests, all of that kind of goes out the window. In fact, there are people saying, oh, don't blame these protests for the spread of the coronavirus. Blame racism. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. You know, I, I mean, I'm not saying that these protests shouldn't be happening, but to just sort of blame racism for the, for the spread? You know, there's, there's articles like this. Um, over a thousand health professionals sign a letter saying don't shut down protests using coronavirus concerns as an excuse. Now, I agree that, that we, we shouldn't shut these things down, but to just completely minimize the effects of them is, is, I don't know. So we got the letter, which went on to draw more than 1,200 signatures, focuses on techniques to reduce harm to people protesting racial injustice. We created the letter in response to emerging narratives that seem to malign demonstrators as risky for the public health because of COVID-19. Well, they are risky. This is risky. I mean, you, I, I'm, we shouldn't shut them down, but to, to act like it's, they're not risky is stupid. Instead, we wanted to present a narrative that prioritizes opposition to racism as vital to public health, including the epidemic response. We believe that the way forward is not to suppress protests in the name of public health, but to respond to protesters' demands in the name of public health, thereby addressing multiple public health crises. Staying at home, social distancing, and public masking are effective at minimizing the spread of COVID-19. To the extent possible, we support the application of these public health best practices during demonstrations that call attention to the per pervasive lethal force of white supremacy. I, I, I mean, I guess I can't be so nitpicky about that. Anyway, however, as public health advocates, we do not condemn these gatherings as risky for COVID-19 transmission. We support them as vital to the national public health and to the threatened health specifically of black people in the United States. We can show that support by facilitating safest protesting practices without detracting from demonstrators' ability to gather and demand change. This should not be confused with a permissive stance on all gatherings, particularly protests against stay-at-home orders. Let me interject one more thing from this letter. That's just... I, I can't even wrap my mind around it. Black people are also more likely to develop COVID-19. Black people with COVID-19 are diagnosed later in the disease course and have a higher rate of hospitalization, mechanical ventilation, and death. COVID-19 among black patients is yet another lethal manifestation of white supremacy. What? What in the world is that supposed to mean? What in the world? That's, it's suggesting, oh, uh, uh, a disease because it affects a group more. That's, that's white supremacy. What the hell? That's, that's, that's ludicrous. So, I don't know. It seems like these professionals are are promoting a, a particular type of political viewpoint. You know, um, 
I don't know. I mean, maybe we shouldn't look at this as political, you know. Uh, maybe we should have people on, on all sides of the political spectrum protesting against this stuff, you know. It would be nice, but that's just not the reality. So, I don't know. It, it's just, this is more of this notion that you need to promote a very particular viewpoint or be silenced. This makes the people who are promoting conspiracy theories and misinformation and disinformation, this makes them more popular. Doing this sort of thing makes them more popular. You know, especially these no this notion that, that some people are pushing this, uh, oh, don't blame the protests for the spread, blame racism. You know, it's just... It's over the top. And to me, this, this is kind of ensuring that we're going to have a red wave in November. You know, the people that disagree are not going to be vocal about it because they'll be immediately called racist or conspiracy theorists or any of that. You must believe in this narrative or you're a terrible person. I mean, this is worse than Hillary Clinton calling Trump supporters deplorables. This is, this is worse than that. You know, this is saying you must push this narrative or you're a terrible person. And that's dangerous. If, if we're expecting to, to have any sort of a blue wave, yeah, that's, we can kiss that goodbye with all this stuff that's been going on. I certainly don't want to see a red wave. But it looks like it's inevitable, you know? And there, and there are people out there pushing this notion that we shouldn't even say anything bad about the actual rioting and the black businesses that have been destroyed. And the people's li people who have had violence brought against them by some of these rioters. You know, I'm not speaking about the peaceful protesters. I'm talking about the rioters. There are people saying we shouldn't even say anything bad about the rioting. You know, as I've said before, I understand why they're doing the rioting, but that doesn't mean I promote the rioting. There's a part of me that wants to say we can't fight hate with hate. We can't fight violence with violence. What's, you know, looting the target going to do? And then I remember where that part comes from. That part ain't my, that's not my ancestors speaking to me. <laughs> that ain't nobody black that was walking down the fucking street in 1950 and had to get the fuck out um, the way of the white man and the white woman. All of my, all of my, uh, my ancestors lynched, hanging from trees. That ain't what none of them was saying. <laughs> White people love to bring up MLK. MLK was peace. MLK, we gotta be that. Y'all shot that motherfucker too. <laughs> y'all built this country off of looting, off of violence. Y'all have colonized the world off of looting and off of violence. This country does not speak peace. America does not speak peace. How do you communicate with a party of people with a language they don't know? We've been peacefully protesting. We've been taking the fucking knee. Then we're monsters. We're monsters when we take a, when we shut the when we shut our black mad ass at mad asses up. We're monsters. If I'm gonna be a monster, you better believe I'm gonna burn this bitch down. Fuck you. If I'm gonna be a villain regardless, I wanna say, oh, you don't, well, you know, every time we loot some shit, it paints a picture. The picture been painted. The picture has been painted. The paint is dry. <laughs> the paint is dry, my It's chipping. It's peeling. 
That doesn't mean I condone it. That doesn't mean I say that it's okay. Do I think Trump is doing the right thing in trying to bring the military in to, to calm down this rioting? No. Especially since the rioting has calmed down so much and most of it's just protesting now. So let's bring the military in to, uh, to try to, to stop the protesters? No, that's not the right way to do things. And we can see that... I mean, we're, we're that 77-year-old man pushed down and he, he hits his head and it gets a concussion and is bleeding out his ear. You know, we, we can see that, that using military-style force to try to stop the protests is not the right route. There's going to be people that are just like, we need to stop the rioting. And so many people are not wanting to do anything to stop the rioting. And... And then we have people that are pushing that we should abolish the police. Just all together. What, so, so rioting can just go over the top? So people can just be all the criminals they want and nothing gets done about it? Oh, is that justice? Is that social justice? I don't know. Things are crazy right now. I'm worried there's going to be a red wave. You know, we're going to just have to see what happens. But I certainly hope this some of this crazy shit that's being promoted, like abolish the police, I hope it, it stops getting traction. I really do. I hope enough people on the left say, hey, wait a minute, this is going too far. Anyway, I digress. Or I, maybe I don't digress. I just I guess I'm rambling for too long. So I'll end the video now. Have a nice day. Thanks for watching.